Hello everyone, I'm Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Laura. And we are the Sufficient Seven. And today we are going to be reviewing the book Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Right here. Okay, like what did you think of Agnieszka? Overall I liked Agnieszka. I liked from the beginning, she's kind of different than all the other people that the dragon has had, clearly, like when he teaches her an Estelo. And he's always dressing her up in like these elegant costumes, and she's like, that's not no. me at all. Yeah. And I'd be like her, I'd be like, no, just put me in like something simple so I can yeah. go run around. Homespun. Yeah. I'd do my thing. I liked the romance that she and the dragon had, but at the same time it was weird because when you first pick up this book and read the blurb, you think, ah, yes, this is going to be a romance between the two of them. But it's really it's not. not. It's no. more about her and her life and her struggles, and he's just there instead of it being about the two of them. Yeah, I feel like some people might criticize it and say that it mm -hmm. came out of nowhere. I personally was reading for that the entire <laughs> time, but I consider myself a hopeless romantic, so I feel yeah. like that was just me. I liked, I, I put in my notes, I liked that it wasn't an insta-love story. For a long time, they were really annoyed with each other, and then somewhere that annoyance turned into, like, pent-up sexual feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which culminated... twice. <laughs> it, it was weird because the dragon throughout the entire thing, even when they are kind of together, he's still kind of mean. Which was weird. Yeah. And then I actually, I didn't think he was going to come back in the end. Like I was writing in my notes, I was like, well, I guess if he's just like not strong enough to like take on a relationship and finally like relinquish himself to another person, like that's fine. Not everyone changes. You know, you can't have this huge like arc of character development for everyone in every book. And then he comes back like a page later at the end. I was like, well, never mind. That's not relevant page. anymore. I read the last page so I knew he was coming back. <laughs> of course he did. But even, <laughs> even then, I feel like if he didn't come back it would have been like, well, he didn't grow at all. But I feel like Agnieszka has changed him a little. Mm -hmm. At least in the way he like thinks about magic. Like I definitely yeah. think towards the yeah. end he like gets it that like it's different for everyone. And you can definitely see that when you compare him with all the other wizards in the story. Because they're so baffled by Agnieszka and they don't think that she can do anything at all and it was really funny when she was going for the trials and they basically <laughs> said you have no magic in my head I was just screaming like pull me a bitch <laughs> and she yeah. like does it with stamps on the floor <laughs> and creates this earthquake and they're like well, well we can't say you have no magic now yeah exactly <laughs> yeah but they all even after that they were so dubious of the fact that she could possess some type of magic that they didn't know of I guess old country thinking versus like new country thinking. Yeah. Although one thing I wondered throughout the book that was never answered is what the dragon's actual name is because they reveal his name is Sarkhan, but that's just the word for dragon in the magic language. Mm -hmm. So maybe he doesn't have one because he says he was found at three years old <laughs> in the streets. <laughs> maybe. That was weird. That was just really <laughs> offhand. He was like, oh yeah, I was found at three years old in the streets. <laughs> You know, because that's you just forget about that. Yeah, I liked Kasha. I wasn't fully convinced of her friendship with Agnieszka besides what we're told. It wasn't really shown. Mm -hmm. I do like the whole showing versus telling thing in books. Because Agnieszka misses Kasha so much more than her actual family, which is kind of odd. That was weird. It's like, oh, Kasha, I miss her so much. She's so great. And then I, your family is just. <laughs> I guess it could be because she'd grown up her whole life thinking that like Kasha was going to be taken away from her mm -hmm. and then she was taken away from Kasha. It's kind of like a reversal. Um, but also, I don't understand. Her superhuman strength came out of nowhere. <laughs> she just became the Hulk. <laughs> she just became the Hulk after she got out of the woods. She'd been there for like a day encased in this tree and then she came back and she had superhuman powers. Which I don't understand at all. No. It was really weird because they they said at one point, and again, they just mentioned it offhand. Oh yeah, because she had superhuman strength now. What? <laughs> <laughs> and I understand from the beginning you're told that there's something not human about her anymore. 
And I remember Agnesha said something like, I know that it's Kasha, but if someone else, like a stranger had seen it, they would know something's wrong and like sh maybe she isn't human. And so I get that, but I feel like the supernatural strength was just thrown in there and no explanation. And you're just supposed to assume that it's because she was trapped in a tree. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> and then, and then when they're fleeing with the royal children, it mentions something about an arrow going through Kasha's cloak and hitting her. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's been hit by an arrow. <laughs> and then she just says like, oh yeah, lucky thing that like arrows don't pierce her skin and knife blades go dull. And I was like, what? <laughs> she's the Hulk. Yeah. I feel like that could have been explained a bit more. Yeah, I, I guess she just assumed that we added that into the hu superhuman strength. I didn't. <laughs> Oh, yeah. and the part when they're healing Kasha through the summoning, Agnieszka understood and like, I don't know, they kind of like dealt within like a few pages with all like the different feelings like jealousy and like, I don't know if it was hatred, but like just different things that they were going through because they had what they've been through their entire lives and Agnieszka being taken away and not Kasha and yeah, I, that was never returned to and I, so I thought that was No, there was a lot of pent up resentment between the two, which I can understand because if you're Kasha, your mother has resigned herself to giving you up and you go your entire life being prepared for being chosen and then you're not chosen, that's horrible. Um, and then when you're Agnieszka growing up, you're always second best to Kasha, but then secretly you're happy that you don't have to deal with being chosen. I can understand how those emotions can build up between them, but after this kind of magical airing of grievances, they never returned to it, and I don't think that everything could just be resolved by acknowledging the the issues of the other person. I think they might have needed to talk about it a little more, but they didn't. I feel like the only excuse I'd give for that is that there's so much that happened in the book. Mm -hmm. There was no time, no real time to deal with any of that. That's what I, I didn't like. I felt like some things there was no time for. I really would have liked it if the antagonism with the wood was maybe brought in a little earlier while Agnieszka was training with Sarkon because there's almost a split in the middle of the book between when the wood is a problem and when it isn't and then they go into the wood a couple times and have all of these issues like at first Agnieszka escapes and then goes and helps and like kills all these cows that are corrupted and then there's this other guy and she can't heal them and then Kasha gets taken by the wood and then the obstacle quill becomes can we heal Kasha and then the prince comes back and then he says well my mom's in the wood so you should get her out so then the obstacle becomes getting the queen out of the wood and then the obstacle becomes going to the capital to make sure that the queen and Kasha are not killed and then the obstacle <laughs> becomes the wood see this is what it just builds and builds and builds and builds and it felt very rushed to me after a very slow paced training, getting to know, well you don't really even get to know Sarkon that much really in the first <laughs> half of the book, he's just bitchy. So, <laughs> True. So I, I feel like it would have been almost better as two books if they implemented yeah. the woods more in the first part and were able to put some more character development in it. That being said, I did like the plot, it just was paced oddly. Yeah. It was also one of those things like you think this is going to be like where the book is heading and where the climax is going to be, but then it's not. And then you think it's the next thing, then you think it's the next. And then finally you reach the point where it is and you're like, finally. Yeah. But not a bad finally. I don't yeah. want to sound mean about it. Which let me just say, when they finally realize that the wood is this wood queen who's really old and resentful was odd. She was, mm -hmm. it was odd. <laughs> it was just odd. And then they come upon her and she's sleeping in the wood and they've got their little fire <laughs> potion and they're like, let's just pour it down her throat. And it was kind of a funny sequence of events because they're like, yeah, okay, we're gonna kill her. And then Agnieszka has this little internal crisis and she's like, I feel like this isn't the way to go about things. And then Sarkhan's like, nope, I'm going for it. And so, <laughs> and so then they go to kill her and I was like, if this is how she dies, that is the least climactic ending ever. <laughs> yeah, so and luckily there, there was a battle and we weren't disappointed, so yeah. Oh, at the end, 
I guess Kasha writes that letter to Agnieszka, and then she writes one to Venza. But like, out of nowhere, Agnieszka's like, oh, this letter was so harsh, like, I had to soften it for her mom. And I just thought that was weirdly thrown in there, but... Oh, you mean why that was even included? Yeah. I feel like it was trying to tie up a loose end, but there were other ones that, that should have been been more important. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people died in this book. Yeah, I didn't realize it till later. I was like, oh, whoa. Because you got the king, Queen Hannah, I guess. And Marek. Marek and Sigmund. And Marek's brother. And yeah. Marek's brother's wife. And the children survived. And like 10,000 soldiers. <laughs> BD. <laughs> you know. It was also pretty creepy. Like there were, yeah. the woods were creepy. When they mentioned the walkers, my first thought was like, Walking Dead. So I was I just picturing like zombies. <laughs> <laughs> they were just like, and the walkers came out of the forest and I was like, I'm gonna need some description here because I'm just thinking of them as zombies. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, they're tree people. And then the walkers just became kind of sinister versions of like the Ents from Lord of the Rings yeah, in yeah. my head. Except I didn't place like bark on their skin, they were just like that, like a ghastly pale color. Oh. Like kind of like I am legend zombies. <laughs> I did not picture them that way at all. I mean like they were the size and like shape of ants, but <laughs> it's terrifying. They're like vampire zombie giants. I don't know why I made them like that, but that's what my no. mind thought up and that's what happened. That's no, what I, I thought it was really creepy when they were in the capital and that bestiary book turned people into monsters. That yeah, was scary. That was. I feel really bad for Father Father Bolo. Yeah. Who's also so a casualty. <laughs> of the many. Yeah. Look at the end when the walkers were really nice. Then I pictured them like ends. Yeah. <laughs> it changed my mind. That was no, yeah. I was like, now you're ends. Yeah. Like, before they were sinister ends, and I'm like, now you're just ends. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, they're like gardeners. Speaking of creepy, the queen. Queen, Queen Hannah. Yeah, who the, I didn't actually expect them to get her out of the forest and then she was out pretty quickly. I didn't understand how she'd gone from being a shell of a person to a person all of a sudden and then it made a lot of sense when they're like, it's the wood. Yeah. So I, I like that because the entire time it's like something doesn't smell right. Yeah, you just like know innately. Mm -hmm. like instinctually they're like there's something wrong so every book I'm gonna try and read some of my favorite quotes or some of our favorite quotes from it Quote. but I could give them something else entirely I could give them what they really wanted and then I realized I knew what that was after all they wanted to know they wanted to see what it had been like they wanted to feel themselves a part of it of the Queen's rescue they wanted to be living in a song that wasn't truth anything like it but it might convince them the spare Kasha's life I just thought it sounded pretty well this one is kind of sad <laughs> It's when they're fighting outside of the dragon's tower and Agnieszka's walking through and they're like making tunnels and she's thinking about like everyone's life and how like everyone has their own story. That was a story too. They all had stories. They had mothers or fathers, sisters or lovers. They weren't alone in the world, mattering to no one but themselves. It seemed utterly wrong to treat them like pennies in a purse. I wanted to go and speak to that boy, to ask him his name, to find out what his story really was. That would have been dishonest, a stop to my own feelings. I felt the soldiers understood perfectly well that we were making sums out of them. This many safe to spend, this number two highs, if each one wasn't a whole man. I don't know, it kind of says a little yeah. about war too. It's just like, definitely. It just seems like everyone's yeah. just another person in like this. Yeah. How soldiers shouldn't be used just for fodder because they're all people too. Yeah. This is uh, when Nash goes in the forest and she's talking about the people in the trees. <laughs> I stood silent, afraid. I was beginning to understand. This was where the woods corruption came from. The wood people had changed willingly. They still lived. They dreamed long, deep dreams. But it was closer to the life of trees and not the life of people. They weren't awake and alive and trapped. Humans locked behind bark who could never stop wanting to get out. Just kind of part of like the whole story about like why like why the wood cake became corrupted in the first place and where all the people and the heart trees came from. Speaking of heart trees, I asked Elizabeth. I'm not sure if they actually explained at the beginning what a heart tree is. They yeah. just refer to the trees that people have been like sucked into as heart trees. And I think they first mention it when Kosh is in there. Is is it a heart tree because she's there or I mean eventually you get the concept of a heart tree, but I feel like they could have described it better. I Googled heart tree and it came up with like the weirdwood tree like from Game of Thrones. You know the trees with like the faces on them. <laughs> I was like, oh. that's not what this is, but now that image is in my head. <laughs> Another thing I liked in the sense of being uprooted is when she finds out why the dragon has taken 
people away from the village because there's some type of inherent magic in the land that draws people there. That's why there's such a strong connection to the village and that's why the girls don't stay there anymore after they've been with the dragon because he's slowly taken away their roots from the place, which was a really interesting concept. Mm -hmm. But it would have been better maybe if they explained that inherent magic in the area. Or maybe the point is that it's not supposed to be explained, it's just a place with magic. Overall I liked the book. I liked a lot of elements of the plot. I loved the way that she wrote and the way that she described magic. So I'd say my only qualms were just character development and pacing, but I don't think that deterred from my overall appreciation for the book. No, I definitely enjoyed it and I want to own it now. So I know this book isn't as popular as some others. I would recommend reading it. If you have read it or if you want to read it, comment below and we will respond to you. We will. <laughs> Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We try to put out new videos every Thursday. We also have all of our social media accounts listed below in the description. So until next time, bye! bye. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's <laughs> compared with the four. Like I was thinking about World War One and like the lost generation. <laughs> it's like working in retail. <laughs> <laughs>